Hello and welcome to UCTV Alive for Kids. I'm your host, Dr. Louise Grimmer from the University of Tasmania. UCTV Alive for Kids is an interactive online show that's broadcast monthly by Zoom webinar. As a reflection of our institution's recognition of the deep history and culture of this island, the University of Tasmania wishes to acknowledge the traditional owners of Lutruwita, Tasmania, the Palawa people, the original custodians of the land from which we are broadcasting to you today. We pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Now your microphone and camera have all been disabled to protect your privacy. This broadcast is being recorded for later access on the Peter Underwood Centre website and YouTube, which we will share during the Q&A break. Today's episode is all about the Aurora Australis or Southern Lights, and we're so lucky to have Dr. Lisa Ann Gershwin, known as Glow Girl, presenting today. Originally from the United States, Lisa now lives in Tasmania, and she has a PhD in jellyfish. She's been working with bioluminescence for 30 years and is a successful scientist, writer and artist. She's also autistic. Lisa has just started her second PhD at the University of Tasmania in science communication, which makes sense as her TED Talks have attracted thousands of views on YouTube and she has had regular appearances on television and radio, including 60 Minutes and You Can't Ask That. I'd like to invite Lisa to join me on the screen now. Welcome, Lisa. Hi there. Hi. How are you, Louise? I'm great. Thank you so much for coming on today, Lisa. It's just really exciting. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm thrilled to be here. Lisa, your latest project is called Glow Show. It's a, it's a show that's on in Hobart where you talk to audiences about things that glow in the dark the aurora, sea sparkles, glow worms, and ghost mushrooms. It sounds amazing, and I can't wait to get there myself. What's the most exciting thing about Glow Show? Oh, look, being able to tell stories about things that glow in the dark. Who doesn't love things that glow in the dark? I'm so tickled. <laughs> well, uh, Lisa, we are going to give a sampler of some of your glow show today on Alive for Kids. And um, you're going to be, um, we're going to watch a video that you've put together on the Aurora Australis or the Southern Lights. Are you ready to jump in and, and, and play this video for everyone? Let's do this. Let's do it. G'day, I'm Dr. Lisa. This is my glow show. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the magnificent Aurora Australis, the Southern Lights. This is a time lapse of an aurora and so it's faster than what we see in real life but you see the beautiful colors the green and the pink and the beams dancing across the horizon so this shot is really interesting what we see is two different views of the aurora a little bit of science um, so the shot on the right is what the camera sees the shot on the left is what our eyes see without the camera. Our eyes have great vision because of little tiny things in our eyes called rods and cones. These are the structures that give us our vision. Cones see color, but not at night unless it's really bright. Rods see at night, but not in color. So if colors are dim, we struggle to see them at night. So for us, the aurora is more washed out when we see it. But strangely, and nobody knows why that I've been able to find, when we see the aurora over water, the reflection on the water is more beautiful, more saturated with color than what our eyes see in the sky. But of course, the camera sees even better because it doesn't have rods and cones. It just sees the full color. Okay, so here's what's so fascinating 
What I love most about the aurora, other than the beautiful, beautiful colors in the sky that we see, is that we can actually know when it's coming. So aurora, give us about three days notice. Um, so what happens with the aurora? The sun uh, ejects these charged particles. It's a physics thing. But these charged particles come out of the sun and hurtle towards Earth. And it takes about three days for the particles to leave the sun and come to the Earth. And our magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field, actually shields us from these charged particles, it protects us. But what it does is it funnels these charged particles to the North Pole and the South Pole which is why we see the aurorae at the two poles. So the aurora comes in a variety of really dazzling colors, but whether it's greenish, yellowish, or uh, reddish, pinkish, purplish, orangish. Um, so the green tones and the red tones are because of different gases in the atmosphere and these charged particles that come from the sun interact with these gases in the atmosphere and give us these colors that are so dazzling for us to see. So I just want to leave you with a thought. We know how to predict the aurora, well mostly at least, um, and we know the science behind how the aurora happens. But here's the thing, knowing the science and knowing the prediction makes it no less wondrous. And we are so lucky here in Tasmania to get the aurora quite frequently actually. So please get out there and see the aurora. It's amazing. Thank you for joining me for this little sampler of the Glow Show. I am so excited about my Glow Show. Come join me to learn more about the Aurora Australis and about bioluminescence, sea sparkles, glow worms, ghost mushrooms, and even fluorescent marsupials. I'm Dr. Lisa, the Glow Girl coming to you from my beautiful Glow Show studio in beautiful downtown Hobart. Thank you. What an amazing presentation so beautiful and those glowing marsupials at the end well i'm sure you all have lots of questions for dr lisa so what we'll do now is we'll take a five minute break and you can come up with some of your questions and post them in our q a function that you can see on your screen and you can ask your questions anonymously if you prefer, but if you'd like to include your school name and your first name, I'll try and give you a shout out on the program. So we'll switch over to our five minute break screen now, and we'll see you shortly with some of your great questions for Dr. Lisa. Well, welcome back, everyone. That five minutes goes very quickly, doesn't it? We have got lots of questions for you, Lisa, and not a lot of time. So I think we'll try and get through them as quickly as we can because there are so many great questions. So let's start off. Okay, the first question is from St. Joseph's in Queenstown. It's from Olivia. It's a great question. Why is it important for things to glow? Oh, different things glow for different reasons. So for some things, they're actually um, attracting food or maybe attracting a mate or uh, maybe they're scaring away predators. Uh, so different things glow for different reasons. Here's a question from Luke, who's one of our homeschool students. Which parts of Tasmania are the best to see the aurora? This is what's so cool about Tasmania, all of Tasmania. So we can see the aurora anywhere that we've got a good view of the southern horizon, which is, well, pretty much just about all of Tasmania. So 
yeah, just get out there and look south. It's amazing. Here are some questions from Deloraine Primary School. Are the lights as bright as daylight? Uh, that's a really good question. No, they're not as bright as daylight. Um, they're often quite pale or quite dim, but we can see them really, really well with a camera or sometimes they're very bright, even with the naked eye, uh, but that's more rare. Here's a question from Freya. Where do you find the mushrooms that glow in the dark? Oh, they're fantastic. So they grow on rotting wood. So um, rotting tree stumps, rotting trees, rotting logs, places like that. And they come up usually a few days after a rain. And then, so if you see them during the day and then you come back at night and they'll be glowing, they're fantastic. Not all mushrooms, just some types of mushrooms. You'll know them, you can't mistake them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another question. Why does the aurora sometimes look like a rainbow shape? I saw one once with white rainbow shape then faded away to green. What causes this? Wow, this is one of those stump the scientist Oh, questions. sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I love the ones that stump the scientist. Um, uh, whoever asked that is going to grow up to be a really, really smart person. It was an anonymous we'll person. <laughs> we'll have to find out on that one. Um, yeah. Here's a question from Mackenzie. Can you see the aurora from space? Yes, it's amazing. So if you Google, you'll see some Aurora pictures from the space station and they're really amazing. It looks like these green ribbons of light around the poles of the earth. Here's another question. How did you feel the very first time you saw the lights? Oh, wow. Um, I, I, I was overcome with awe and wonder. It, it, it's amazing. All, all of these things, not just the aurora. I mean, you know, ghost mushrooms, um, it, it, you know, sea sparkles. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, obviously glow worms, any of these. So beautiful. And they just, they take your breath away. They really do. Here's another question. Um, does the aurora only occur in Tasmania or can you see it in other places as well? Oh, this is amazing. So the aurora occurs at both the North Pole and the South Pole. Here, near the South Pole, of course, um, we get a really good view of it here in Tasmania, but you can also get it on the mainland. So if it's stronger, it, it, it's quite common to see it in uh, Southern Victoria, but it's actually been reported as far north as Brisbane in Queensland. And I saw some video recently of the aurora behind Ayers Rock. So wow. it's amazing, but we're lucky we get it here more often. So. Here's, here's a really um, interesting related question. Now this is from Brandon and he asks, does the aurora australis happen on other planets? Yes, it does. It happens on lots of other planets. So you gotta Google this, it's amazing. But there, but as far as I'm aware, there's nobody there to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good question, though, isn't it? It is a good um, question. Here's a nice question from Taryn. What inspired you to do your job, Dr. Lisa? <laughs> oh, look, I've been fascinated with things that glow in the dark since I was a child. I was that child that had the, you know, the plastic on the ceiling in my bedroom and um, I've just been fascinated with things that glow in the dark forever and this opportunity came up and I couldn't pass it up and I absolutely love sharing things that glow in the dark with other people. Now there's some great questions here from a school I'm not sure which school it is but they've got some great questions here's here are some this question is from Jax what were the things in the small test tube in the video? Oh, so one of them was spinach juice, which looks green until you shine a UV light on it and it goes red. And that's very cool. That's an experiment that you kids can do. It's very cool. Um, and then um, the other one was actually the sea sparkles themselves, oh. what I've got in a vial, but um, they're in formaldehyde. So they're no longer alive, but you can see them and they're really cute, you know, kind of <sighs> moving around in there. 
Yeah, we've got we've got to go and see these things in person if we can. There are some questions here that are sort of related um, from Steph and from Bentley. Um, how did the Aurora Australis get its name, or, or why are they called Auroras and Aurora Australis? Yeah, so the Aurora was named by Galileo back in the 1600s, and it's named after the goddess Aurora, who's the goddess of dawn, and that's because you know it's sort of dawn at night and so it was named after the goddess aurora and then australis comes from uh austral means southern and so it's the southern dawn if you will yeah, and we call it southern lights don't we it's also it's called southern lights, lights. yeah it's beautiful that's beautiful and, 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 and i just want to add on to that that the sea sparkles um their latin name is noctiluca scintillans which means uh, nocta is night, luca is light, and scintillans means sparkling or glittering. How beautiful That's is beautiful. that? Beautiful. Nightlight. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> here's, a, here's a great question from Jordan. What happens after an aurora? Ah. Uh, so when it finishes, does it just sort of go black immediately or does yeah, it sort of yeah. fade? You oh, know? it does kind of fade. But, it, yeah, mostly people go home and get some sleep. Yeah. So- <laughs> Actually, there was a question on here that said, why does it always happen after my bedtime? <laughs> oh, I know. Well, okay, but I can tell you that during the winter, um, we've got more nighttime hours, so we've got more time to see it. So maybe it doesn't happen after bedtime. That's a really good <laughs> point and a good benefit of uh, being dark early. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Here's a good question from Jack about the marsupials. How did the marsupials that you showed in the pictures, how did they glow? So um, so the marsupials in the pictures weren't actually marsupials. Those were back to my Oh, my, sorry. Yep. No, 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 it's okay. But they actually were made to glow with jellyfish genes that were inserted into their DNA. But marsupials glow because of properties of their fur. And when you shine a UV light on them, and I'm not suggesting that people actually go and shine UV lights on living animals, like, please don't, it would be dangerous to them. But but their fur actually glows these amazing colors because of the properties of chemicals in their fur. Wow. I'd I've never just seen... written a paper on this. It's oh. amazing. And a friend of mine is doing her PhD on this very subject. It's wow. amazing. I'd never seen um, those pictures before. I had no idea. Um, here's a, a question from Bella at WHPS. Uh, how long does an aurora last? It's a really good question. This is one of those how long is a piece of string things. So some aurora last for maybe five or ten minutes and they're over and done with. Other aurora go for days and days. Of course, you don't see them during daylight because the sunlight overpowers the aurora light. But, you know, you might like you see it at night. And then in the northern hemisphere where our day is their night, they see it. And then when nighttime comes, we see it again. So sometimes they go a really long time. Other times they're really short. Every aurora is different. They're, they're like fingerprints. Every aurora is different. Here's a question from Montana. How and why do the colours blend together? Yeah, it's a good question. So because the colours come from the gases in our atmosphere, it just depends on what the makeup of the gases are. So, you know, if it's um, more oxygen than nitrogen, then it's more green than red. Or if it's more nitrogen than oxygen, then it's more red than green. And where you get that interface between them, then you get sort of that blurring a bit of them. Yeah. Uh, Here is a question that I was thinking too. This is from Bronte. Does the aurora happen at certain times during the year? That is an outstanding question. Mm. So the aurora actually happens any time of year, but it turns out that it's a little bit commoner uh, during the autumn and spring equinoxes um, or or around the equinoxes, I should say. But also um, we talk about wintertime being aurora season. It's not that the sun is more active during our winter, but it's that we have more nighttime hours, like I was just saying. So we have more hours in which we can see the aurora. So we're more likely to see it. And also because it's 
uh, earlier. Uh, so um, uh, for the school that asked about, uh, you know, how come it always happens after I go to bed uh, during the winter, we can actually see it earlier. So more people are more likely to be out to see it. Ah, and, and this sort of leads to another question. How many times, you know, on average in a year would we have an Aurora Australis? Or can we not really predict <laughs> how many? No, times? well, yes and no. Um, here's the really cool part, though. It happens a lot. We get them frequently. And we, so the sun uh, is active on a cycle. And we're coming into what we call a solar maximum in 2024, 2025. So as we get closer to 2024, 2025, we're gonna get more Aurora more often and they'll be better. So stay tuned, seriously, get out there and watch these things. Absolutely. Because we get a lot of them. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's a question. How many times have you seen the Aurora? Oh, heavens, lots. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots. But, you know, but, but let me just say, like every single time, feels amazing as if, as if it's the first time and every aurora is different so in a way it kind of is the first time because you've never seen that aurora before and yeah look it's um you never get tired of it it's always wondrous and beautiful it's so beautiful all of the different pictures that you see people post them up on social media don't they and they're just amazing aren't they some of the pictures you showed today so yeah. beautiful the colors so beautiful here's a, a question related to that sorry, why let me, the... just, let me just say yeah. sorry um there is a facebook page called aurora australis tasmania there's a lot of members of and the pictures there seriously the pictures that the photographers are posting and they're not all professional photographers they're just people like you and me who yeah. are posting the most wondrous photos so it's well worth getting onto the Facebook page and just having a look at these magnificent photos yeah so, that's amazing so Aurora Australis Tasmania is the Facebook that's page right. that's great yeah. thanks thanks Dr Lisa here's a question why do the lights change color is it to do with the different gases is that right yeah that's right so as the charged particles coming from the sun are interacting with the gases in our atmosphere you get these different colors and but then you also get these beams that are also reacting to the gases and the particles and whatever so you get you know, the reds and pinks up above and you get the greens and yellows down below. And then you get these beams shooting up and dancing across the horizon in these other colors. So it's really quite dazzling with these different colors and different things happening when there's, you know, a good aurora. So here's a, a question from Archer at Waimea Heights and it's related what are the some of the different types of gases that cause those different colors yeah it's a really good question so the gases that call uh, that um uh, are involved with the main colors that is the greens and the reds um the greens are usually oxygen and the reds are usually nitrogen but then there's a whole bunch of other gases that can also be involved in the colors, but usually less so. The dominant ones are certainly the oxygen green and the nitrogen reds and purples. That was a great question. Thank you, Archer. Well, listen, I can't believe it, but we've run out of time. We could Holy talk God. about the Aurora Australis for, for so long. If you are in Hobart or you can get to Hobart, I highly recommend that you go and visit Dr. Lisa's Glow Show. I know I'm going to be taking my son. He's 11 and some of his friends. It just looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure you'll all join me in thanking our special guest, Dr. Lisa Ann Gershwin today. Thank you, Lisa. It's just Thank wonderful. You. I just it's want to wonderful. give you a quick shout out. How can people find out online about the Glow Show? Glowshowtaz.com. Um, okay yeah. that's great so hop on hop on uh, just the Google internet glow show. and just google glow show that's wonderful thank you dr lisa my pleasure it's been delightful thank you <laughs> well everyone um i can't believe the time goes so quickly on these shows our next episode is going to be on monday the 17th of october again from two o'clock till 2 30 and our guest is marie backer from natural resources and environment tasmania she's going to return to uctv alive for kids and she's going to do a demonstration which is called wonderful ways with waste wool 
So I hope that you will join us for that episode. If you missed out on some of the details during the Q&A break about how you can register, you can follow the Peter Underwood Centre on Facebook or follow UCTV Alive for Kids on Instagram. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking part in today's program. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time.